a couple of years ago. We all go through this midlife crisis, trying to understand where exactly are we leading to. The same occurred to me, and that's where I got into this subject called farmer suicide and famine, which was actually hurting practically the entire country. Took a small case study where a small village between the states of Karnataka and uh, Tamil Nadu. Uh, this particular village uh, was on severe drought and famine. Our team went there and studied there for uh, practically around three, uh, three odd months to find out what was driving them to these extreme cases. Found out that it was actually not famine. After three months of study, and we say it's not famine that is committing suicide. The story goes like this. Villages have festivals and weddings happen where the entire community, the entire village folks help a hand monetarily and in terms of their resources. What they don't foresee is death. Death comes which is unplanned for. That's where they borrow money. And there are hawkers and bankers included with high interest rates very difficult to repay back. Even after full successful crops, they just cannot repay back. And one of these reasons, main reasons for these guys to actually commit suicides were on high loans. We even tried the matriarchal society where the lady of the house controls the finances. That too was, uh, we can escape that, but not the loans. Through this process is where I came across the subject called hydroponics, where we can grow uh, herbs and vegetables in conditions which otherwise is impossible uh, for these guys, for the livelihood to happen. That way, a company called Hydrobloom started. The, one of the main reasons which we saw was the global warming and inconsistent seasons. We were looking out for an innovative, sustainable ecosystem. <clears throat> hydroponics was the answer. What is hydroponics? Simple steps. It uses very, very less water. Why? Water is recycled back into the system. When the plant requires the water, we have spurts of uh, water which is sprayed on the roots for it to grow. It requires, I've mentioned one-fourth the space but we have seen vertically grown 18 to 20 odd racks. That means 20x times the growth. This is a revolution which is going to happen. No soil used at all, so no contamination. Faster growth time because of the nutrients which we add is on a controlled mechanism. We use something called humus, and I am recently testing out in our research lab on deep sea nutrients. Absolutely no pesticides. No, for, no fertilizers used. And this is how the basic of hydroponics work. Hydroponics is not new. Hanging Gardens of Babylon, ages, e eons away, used to do hydroponic. The, uh, the, ch the Chinese gardens have been hydroponically grown. They grow these through these bamboo shoots. Plants are grown where water is recycled again and again, where there is minimal use of water. Global trends, surprisingly, India has not even scratched the surface. We have the entire European nation which uh, grows herbs and vegetables. 18% of tomatoes grown uh, in Australia are grown hydroponically. What exactly uh, is uh, pollution? Bangalore is the second largest polluter in terms of vehicular exhaust. And that's where we came up with this, an idea. If hydroponics can be grown in terms of vegetables, why can't we grow vertically on our pillars? And went back and studied someone called Dr. Walterman. He had done a research uh, on the NASA Clean Air Study. What NASA Clean Air Study does is, uh, Elon Musk is right now doing the same, where you can grow uh, vegetables and herbs in space. 
So what he had actually done is uh, take a particular product, uh, uh, a seed, grow it hydroponically with recycled water with controlled nutrients. We have actually done a study with the Mexico uh, uh, pillars where each square meter generates at least a year's supply of oxygen per person, it removes 130 grams of particulates in the hair, 40 tons of greenhouse gases, and around 15 kgs of heavy metals. These are huge. These, this can actually wipe, we can have cleaner, purer MG road if it has been given us a chance. It can also absorb around 10 decibels of sound, which uh, mitigates from these uh, uh, pillars. The, this is by the way of our study. What Dr. Walter Min also had done is, uh, we found out th through chemical vehicular exhaust, there is a chemical called xylene which comes out. Okay, xylene has very harmful effects on our body. It causes mouth ulcers, dizziness, heart problems, liver, kidney damage, and finally coma. Surprisingly, there are plants which absorb these harmful chemicals and give out fresh oxygen. Bingo! We said, why don't we use this on the pillars? And that's what you see on MG Road. It's working fine. It's still on the test phases. We are still having hurdles in terms of uh, the vertical, uh, the heights, but uh, the successes are very promising on this. What I have also done is we have taken uh, the drought and the famine part uh, uh, to another small town uh, where for the cattle was uh, dying because of no fodder. There is a mixture of dry fodder and wet fodder which we usually uh, mix and give cattle. Now since there's no land, uh, uh, because of the drought, yeah, there's no, these, these guys are giving away the cattle. They said we can't feed the cattle. So the hydroponic fodder machines is the answer for this. What it does is, on land, I'm just giving you comparisons between land and uh, uh, hydroponic fodder. Land grown on grass approximately takes 60 days. Hydroponically, it only takes seven day cycle. Around 10,000 square feet of land can produce 72,000 kgs of uh, green fodder. 50 square feet, I'm just looking at next to the cow shed, six by four, a small little fodder machine can produce up to 3,65,000 kgs. That's the kind of numbers which we're looking at. It can wipe out the entire famine in that particular village. So, so it's a huge, huge advantage. And we are right now doing a, a nationwide awareness program. There are many uh, takers for this. Uh, Telangana State has adopted, given uh, government subsidies for fodder machines. Uh, and the place is pretty successful on that particular thing. There's a small instance, there's a small story I would like to actually tell you of our fodder machine. I would visited a politician. Um, of uh, uh, in North Karnataka, and uh, he he lost thrice in in his elections. Uh, he tried various means. He tried means of giving cycles, books, um, a whole lot of incentives for these farmers, but nothing really really worked out. And that's as usual as a sales pitch. I went and told them, why don't you try a fodder machine? And that particular village was uh, in severe drought. And we told him, why don't you choose a, a, a panchayat head or a decision-making guy who can use this machine. If the farmer likes it, let them uh, adapt, uh, adopt this particular part and take it around. I had given this machine, this hydroponic machine, and three months down the line, we went to have, one of my boys went to have a check on this. And sadly, the machine wasn't even used. And we went in again with my flashy presentations, when it said, this is a game changer, this is what you require. They never bothered. They were still reeling under severe drought. A small child taking mustard seeds had dropped it on one of our trays 
and started sprinkling water. And the sprout started forming. That was done manually. Ours is a complete automated machine. And that's when one of the farmers said, I'm going to take up this challenge and grow fodder on this. And mind you, it just took two months. They removed all the religious pictures in, that, in each of these family houses and have actually put this politician's photograph there. That is an impact story which we want to actually showcase to the world and say hydroponic is the future. It has been ranked by one of the leading magazines as the next millennium business for the next three decades. So why? Why is so much of uh, hype on hydroponics and we still haven't scratched the surface? I wonder why. The other part which I, where we intend to do in Bangalore is the last food mile. Uh, with growing pesticides and uh, we don't know what the impurities are of uh, what is happening in what we eat. Uh, we are coming out with, an orga with a hydroponic farmer's market very close to Bangalore. Uh, this would be certified uh, of how pure of what you consume. You know exactly what you eat. So this is coming up in Bangalore, uh, completely hydroponic, uh, the, where the farmers can actually sell their produce there, and you will be certain that uh, this is hydroponics. Okay, there is another topic which I would like to take. Why am I talking so much about hydroponics when we are, in a, we are living in a world of organics? I say, organic is a passe. We are talking of virgin of virgins, we are talking of the purest of pure form, and that's hydroponics. It's a highly, highly debatable topic in US. There are court cases which are happening to prove hydroponics as something different. But again, uh, matter of fact is that you're eating virgin of virgin. It is the purest form. So this is the future uh, which the world has to actually follow. And that's the reason we are coming out with this farmer's market for Bangaloreans to understand uh, what, what they're actually consuming. So uh, there is a whole lot of IoT tags which are uh, our, most of our products are IoT based and we have got a research lab uh, coming out in, in Bangalore where we test uh, hydroponic uh, uh, medicinal herbs. Whenever we talk about hydroponics, I don't know how many of you all have divulged in the subjects, we, we tend to ape the West. We talk about kale, we talk about their power foods, we talk about oregillas, rose, marys, the thymes. We have forgotten. India, medicinal herbs, the Ayurvedic herbs, it can cure practically all the basic diseases what we have. Hypertension, obesity, diabetics, uh, cancer cells, uh, your simple cough and cold. So what we are right now doing is, uh, through our research lab in Bangalore, we are testing out uh, these medicinal herbs and promoting these medicinal herbs which are grown hydroponically. So that's what I, I keep saying to most of my talks, that we are wa walking in nature, with nature, where we can actually witness a thousand miracles, which is so, so true. We hardly realize these miracles are around us. So there, is, there should be an awareness program which we are actually bringing out in terms of promoting our own Indian uh, medicinal herbs. What's triple bottom line? Most of the companies, talk about profits as their main goal. Companies that sustain for a long, long time require three things. It requires people, it requires environment, and then it also requires profit. We hardly take the other two into consideration. We've seen enough and more meltdowns which has happened down. So what, I'm not taking company per se. What we're doing is take individual, take company and the government, and then put these three circles together. All in, in all our acts, if we have this, we can have a sustained long-term uh, ecosystem which can actually contain for the next thousand odd years. Otherwise, we are a lost breed. <clears throat> Last but not the least, a very powerful Mexican proverb which I would like to leave you all on. They tried to bury us. They didn't know we were seeds. Thank you, guys. <clears throat>